Hey what's up guys welcome back to the channel so in today's video the problem that I will explain is lowest common ancestor in a BST. Now this problem is frequently asked by companies like Amazon, Microsoft, Flipkart and many more so guys make sure you stay tuned till the end of the video. Now the problem says that you are given a binary search tree and two node values n1 and n2 where n1 is not equal to n2 and you have to find the lowest common ancestor of the two nodes in the BST. Now I'll start with the lowest common ancestor first. What exactly is lowest common ancestor? So I have a tree here and for this tree let's say I want to find the lowest common ancestor of 6 and 10. So see first task is to write every possible ancestor of node 6 and 10. So let me start with node 6. See guys I want you to recall one thing that ancestor of a node is nothing but the node that we visit while moving from that particular node to the root node right. So for 6 we have the ancestors as 6 itself then 7 then 5 right these are the three ancestors. What about 10? So for the node 10 we have the ancestors as a node itself then 7 then 5 right. So this is about the ancestors. I want you to guys notice the common ancestors here. You can see that we have got two common ancestors which is 7 and 5 right. Out of these two the question is which is the lowest common ancestor right. So I have two common ancestors and I have to return the lowest uh, among these two. So see this is 5 this is 7. You can easily observe that 7 is the lowest common ancestor or lower among these two right. So 7 is the answer for this particular example right. Uh, when I look for the lowest common ancestor for 6 and 10. Now one more example is given in the problem statement itself guys. So for this example see we are given a BST right and the nodes that we have is n1 equals to 7 then 8 right. So let's let me explain this particular example. First of all I'll write the ancestors of node 7 so I have 7 itself then 6 then 5 right this is like moving from 7 to the root and the node that we have is the ancestor. What about 8? For 8 again we have 8 then 7 then 6 then 5 right and now we have 3 common ancestors 7, 6 and 5 so I'll write 7, 6 and 5 and what is the lowest among these 3 uh, ancestors so you can see that 7 is the lowest right so 7 is going to be the lowest common ancestor so 7 is the output for this example. Now I hope you have understood the problem statement well so let's talk about the solution guys. Okay, so I have written one example here and I am going to use this particular example in order to give you the intuition guys. Let's see how. So we have already seen from the problem explanation that for these particular nodes, I have got my lowest common ancestor as this node, right? But how? Let's try to understand. So see guys, first I wrote the ancestors of the node 6. How I can write the ancestor? So I can simply start moving from the node itself then I can visit to the uh, root node right and every node that I get in the path are basically the ancestors. So see guys first I have 6 itself then I have 7 then I have 5. Similarly I can write the ancestor of the node 10. So the same method we are going to use first we will have 10 then we will have 7 then we will have 5 right. Now observe one thing guys as soon as the path becomes 1 we will start getting uh, the common ancestors right and the first ancestor that we get is basically going to be the lowest common ancestor. I hope that makes sense to you because we started from the node itself and as soon as the path becomes 1 then these ancestors are going to be common to both of these nodes right n1 and n2 and as we are starting from the bottom direction so the first node that we have is going to be the lowest common ancestor right. Similarly we can think of the same process in a reverse order. We will start from the root and as soon as the path start breaking then we have got our lowest common ancestor right. So we can write this observation. See how we can write this observation. Guys at the lowest common ancestor basically uh, the path is going to break right. So this means that both n1 and n2 will be at different subtrees. So I can write this observation as uh, like this. Observation says that at LCA both the nodes N1 and N2 are at different subtrees right and it makes sense because now the path is broken down into two parts right. Okay so now there are two things. The first thing is either both the nodes are present at different subtrees or both the nodes are present at the same subtree. So and even for same subtree there are again two cases either both the nodes are present on left subtree or right subtree because you can see that when the node is 5 then both these nodes n1 and n2 are present at the right subtree right. So let me handle this case. Uh, see the first thing is if both nodes both nodes are at uh, right subtree 
right subtree right so for this particular case i'll simply say that we have to move to right so initially we were at root position then as we see that both the nodes are at right subtree so i'll simply move to right direction so i'll say, say that okay move to right direction right direction what about the left subtree so if both the nodes are at left subtree then i'll simply say that okay move to left direction then so i'll simply write this case as well if both nodes uh, are at left subtree right are at left subtree in that particular case i have to move to left direction this case is very similar to the first case right uh, i'll simply write left direction now what is about the else case so this is if case and this is else else if if this case is not true then i'll check this case and if both of these cases are not true then one thing is sure that both the nodes are either not present in the tree or present at different subtrees right but see there is no any case like uh, not present because both nodes must be present in the subtrees right so this means that this particular condition is true both the nodes are present at uh, different subtrees so in that case i can say that else return root return root because root is going to be the current uh, like even root is going to be the lowest common ancestor right for the given node so you can see that at this point i realized that first node is present in the left subtree and the second node is present in the right subtree so this means that the root is going to be the lowest common ancestor right so can we write the code for this of course we can write the code for this so how we can convert this thing to code see guys now a very important property is going to play an important role see guys this is the we are given a bst right so for a bst we know that every node in the right subtree is greater right and every node in the left subtree is smaller than this particular node right so i'll simply check if i want to check if both the nodes are present in the right subtree so i'll check if both the nodes are greater than the root element if both the nodes are greater than root element then they both are at right subtree right and if both the nodes are smaller than root element then they are basically at the left left subtree so i can simply check these cases see this is the code guys the first condition that i'm checking is if both the nodes are present in the left subtree right so if both the nodes are smaller uh, then they will must be present in the left subtree right because for a bst we always have smaller nodes on the left side and greater nodes on the right side so second case is about the greater nodes if both the nodes are greater than root data then both are present at the right subtree right so in that case i have to move to right and if any of this condition is not true in that case i can simply say that root is basically going to be the lowest common ancestor right so now let me show you the code guys this is the code that i have i have written the code in every possible language so this is basically the c++ code this is the java code and this is the python code right i have written all the code in same page so now i hope the intuition and approach is clear to you guys let me quickly talk about the time complexity so the time complexity of this approach is going to be o of h guys o of h because we are not going to traverse more than height of the tree uh, the reason is we are either going to move to left subtree or right subtree this time so this is how we are going to move or this is how we are going to move or this is how right so we are not going to traverse every node you can see that we are skipping some node while moving right similarly the space complexity is again o of h because this is a recursive approach and this is going to occupy some stack space right so this is how we can solve the problem guys i hope you will like the explanation thank you